So I've gotten all the hats. So I guess I guess the heart fruit one you could help me. Um. This one I might not have gotten, which funnily enough looks like the first one I could I could get in theory. I love Turnip Boy. You know, I think they have like Turnip Boy plushes. I might consider getting one. Which isn't something I normally do, right? But like, I don't know, something about Turnip Boy that I just really like. Uh, so I guess it's up here? So it's... No. Oh wait, no, it's over here, actually. Did I get this one? No, I have not. Have I? I don't know, maybe I have. I, I probably did. Because so I imagine I would have done this. This seems very easy to do. And probably is something I 100% would have done. Yeah. Okay, so it's not that one. I mean, that one I've gotten... What the hell, Neo Seeker? Okay, so you can get a lot of hard fruit. But Neo Seeker only has like three on here, so thank you very much, uh, Neo Seeker, for being uh, kind of garbage, to be honest. At least for Turnip Boy, it's being garbage. Turnip Boy Heart Hearts, yeah, sure. Oh, well, uh, Steam AH is definitely, definitely the guy to go for. Turn a boy commits tax evasion, all hearts, and secret, sec, secret boss. Brilliant. Um, so we've gotten that one. Oh, okay. I know which one I don't have. Because I don't think I would have gone back into the same room after I would have done their quest, so let's just go grab that right fast. Yeah, I will say, I do love how bright and colorful Turnip Boy as a game is. It's definitely very pleasant. Okay, so apparently we need to go back to the Pickled Gang after we have freed them. So we gave them the hammer, they gave me the hat. I thought that's all I needed from them. But it turns out that's prob- oh, nope, I did it again. But it turns out that's probably a no. Oh no, they're not free yet. This is a goodbye, Turnip Head. You don't see us around these parts for a long time. We ain't trying to get pinched again. Good luck to you with that tax evasion mess. I remember back when Onion was a different man. I didn't like your father either, but he would have been proud. Okay, so now we leave and we come back? Yeah. Alright, so the Pickled Gang escaped. And we got the heart fruit. So, I now have all achievements in the game. Once again, you know, I don't normally do this in games, but if it's easy enough to do, I may as well, right? Oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. I knew I wasn't cut out for this job. The pickled gang escaped. I'm so fired. So you did 100% it. Yes, I did, apparently. Wasn't expecting to, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I'll take it. Keep confusing this with the Holy Potato series. I need to play Holy Potatoes. Uh, it's been on my list for a long time. I actually got... Holy Potatoes, uh, a weapon shop. Ages ago, because I saw someone play it on YouTube and it looked really good. It looked right up my alley. So I was like, oh, I need to play this, and then I just didn't, because... 
As with most things when it comes to me and streaming, uh, it took a bit of a backseat to other things. Which is kind of unfortunate. Which is why I got the recording stuff on the go. Because, you know what? Recording video games is, uh... It helps me get through a lot more. And I know I haven't really uploaded that much for recordings yet. But, but... Part 1 and 2 to follow might actually be coming out tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that. That'd be really fun. I enjoyed playing it. Um, so that is good. I'm not exactly sure how I wanted to release it. I've been thinking about it. And uh, the idea that I've had when it comes to uploading recordings is uh, I'll have them in hour long segments and then I'll just upload like two parts per day until I'm out of parts. Uh, that's kind of my idea anyway. So I won't do it like what I do with streams where I like cut it and then I upload the whole stream session. It'll be more like I'll have sessions, and then I'll cut that into two hour, like hour long segments. I'll upload two hours of that, even if it's not just the whole session. I think that's how I want to do it. I like the lighter. Turns out the lighter is probably my favorite ability. But I don't know, right now it's uh... Segmenting it makes sense, yeah. Yeah, that, that's kind of kind of my thought on it too, right? And I think, like, it's gonna depend on the game, right? Like, I think with something like Fallout, I think having it be hour-long segments makes sense because in the end, it is still kind of like an RPG. I think with RPGs, where you know they're gonna be a bit longer and maybe a little bit more boring and slow in some spots i think having them be hour long makes sense but for some other things maybe like half an hour segments i don't know i'm, I'm still not entirely sure obviously I'm, I'm new to doing recordings that aren't streams and uploading those right so it still feels a little bit weird to me but not in like a bad way because like i said i can get a lot more done which I think in the end helps, right? You forgot we played Fallout? Yeah, yeah, because I think I only mentioned that um, not too long ago. I haven't really talked about it much. I, I think I just mentioned on Discord that, oh yeah, I played... Oh, it's Pickled Gang. That, oh yeah, like I played... Uh... I don't know if this is good. I mean, I'm going to try it. But it's like, oh, I'm going to play Fallout and I'm going to record it, right? I think that's... Yeah, I don't know. I won't say too much, because then that gives you guys a reason to watch uh, the recording I made. But, yeah. Nah, it's, it's been it's been pretty interesting. I've, I've enjoyed it. I haven't finished Fallout yet, funnily enough. But uh, I'm hoping to maybe record some more of that probably tomorrow. Hey, Bookworm, welcome back to the stream. How you doing today? I'm using all my willpower not to give you cement shoes and throw you in that pond down by the carrot patch. That would be too good of a death for a turnip chino. But since you did break us out of jail, let's just say me not throwing you to the fish makes us even Steven. Now scram, we're on the run. Gotta keep a low profile. Okay, that's pretty funny though. <laughs> the pickle Rick Mafioso. Yeah, so just to catch you up on where we are, Bookworm, apparently, uh, so I've gotten all of the heart fruits, I've gotten all of the hats, uh, that you can get in the base game, anyway. And, uh, I guess they made a roguelike kind of area of Turnip Boy. So I'm going through that, collecting tickets, fighting old bosses, and, um, getting more hats. It's pretty alright. Pretty good, how are you? I'm doing good, thank you. I'm glad you're doing really good, too. Or, well, pretty good. I'm glad you're doing good, right? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good myself. Been having a good time playing Turnip Boy. 
I didn't think the roguelike section would actually be as fun as it is, but it, it, it's really fun. Oh, I can't pick up that heart. I cannot eat it. Interesting, it is, right? And as anyone that has seen me play Hades knows, I, I do enjoy a good roguelike. Oh, I still need to finish Hades. I'm still kind of sad I haven't finished Hades yet, to be honest. Light on fire, please. Thank you, T.Y. See, also the way it's presented reminds me of that developer bootleg of Enter the Gungeon. They had a bootleg of Enter the Gungeon? Or Hotline Miami, but more polished, of course. Yeah, I, I could imagine that. Uh, yeah, I want plastic fangs. I like plastic fangs. Having the... Oh, but having the coffee zoomies would be nice, though. Alright, Turnip. If any chance you happen to have any sodi pop this run. It's been years since I had that fizz. Ah, well, that's a bummer. Okay, so he wanted Sody Pop. You think you only cut one or two of my Hades sessions? That's fair. I haven't really done enough Hades. And to be fair, I think with some of that, you might have been streaming at the same time. So, I certainly do not blame you. I would love to play more Hades again soon, though. Because I, I do miss it. I never did finish the game. I never did beat the final boss. Okay, I think I'm getting, after like four tries, I think I'm getting a uh, conductor onions pattern. So like he'll do this like three times, then he'll run at me. And then he'll do his flying across the screen attack. Yeah. Okay, we're getting we're getting conductor onions pattern down. And on this one, I can attack him multiple times. There we go. The bootleg game collection that's kind of a joke from one of their E3 presentations, but it's real purchasable. And pretty good from what I heard, I might have to look into that. It always feels like too many games to play and not enough time. It really does. It really, really does. That's kind of why I was mentioning to Bass Ackwards why I'm kind of doing uh, off-stream recordings of games now. Because I feel like I can just get a lot more done during the day. Because, like, I love streaming, obviously, right? I enjoy it a lot. But admittedly, uh, if I do stick to the schedule of, like, uh, like, I'm going to have a more proper schedule soon. But if I stick to the current schedule of just, like, you know, uh, like, well, in my time, start at three, go for three hours, and then stop. It's a little bit more difficult to get through games, especially on, on days when I'm, like, just really busy and can't stream as much. Or months when I, or, like, in a month when I'm really busy, like, in December. And I can't stream as much. And plus, some games are just too long. Like, like Bookworm, for for an example, uh, a couple years ago, I tried streaming Skyrim. Because I was like, you know, I'm in a mood for Skyrim, you know. I never played it. I'll give it a shot, right? Uh, I did a few sessions of that. And I'm going to be honest, I don't even think I really technically started the game. And I was like a few sessions in. And I was like, well, shit. This is going to take a long time. And so I stopped playing it because I realized it was going to take a long ass time uh, if to do. Like, it would literally be session 1000. You know, like, it, it wouldn't have been good. But if I record it off stream and upload it to the YouTubes for people to watch later, then it's like, okay, you know, I can I can just kind of play at my leisure. I can just do it without disrupting the stream flow you know uh so yeah that's kind of it's kind of the conclusion i've come to right okay i want i want the coffee zoomies understandable thank you thank you i'm glad you think so
obviously I don't blame anyone for not if they, if they don't want to watch the recorded stuff on YouTube. I know some people like the streams because they're live and interactive and stuff, and that makes them a bit more fun for some people, which I appreciate. Uh, but like I said, I, I think it's just kind of good to have the option of recording at least, you know? To get more done. And to get games done that I don't think would be good stream games, but games that I want to play, right? Or even playing games with Megan, because, like, Megan's schedule is a lot more, uh, kind of hectic than mine. So some sometimes I want to play some games with her, and she isn't always available for streams. So... It's kind of like that, too, right? Where it's like, if I want to do stuff with her, it might actually be a little bit better to just have it be a recording session. Oi, oi, oi. Which, speaking of which, I'm gonna deal with the sheep first before I talk. So if I don't... Oh my god, I fucking hate sheep. I hate sheep so much. Ah, oh, I hate sheep so much! Why are the sheep the worst? Uh, anyway, yeah, that'll give me a good chance to plug the YouTube channel, I suppose, because why not? So, I do believe, if I can type on my keyboard here, uh, I do believe this should link, if I got my bots all correct, to the YouTube channel, which is fun, right, in my opinion. Uh, so if anyone wants to check that out, go there, do your... Do your likes, your comments, and your subscribes, all right? Or just don't and just have fun watching whatever you think you want to watch, right? I've started to make playlists to make that a whole lot easier as well. And I plan on keeping that up. Uh, let's see. Best actor says, I've been forgetting to check out your channel, but on the other hand, no one really actually plays Skyrim Story. They just go Wood Elf Archer and go Murder Hobo. Yeah, pretty much, right? That's kind of true with Skyrim. Well, it's true with Oblivion as well. You don't really do the story. You just kind of do everything else and then the story. Like, I, I literally played Oblivion for hours. Hours. So many hours I poured into Oblivion. And I don't even think I got that far in the story. I just wandered around, did quests, had fun talking with people. Ah, uh, dude, Oblivion was so good. I Well, I enjoyed Oblivion, but I didn't like its level up system. I was even talking to Megan about this. I was saying, Megan, if I ever stream or most likely record Oblivion, I'm going to use a mod to change the leveling system. Because that's the one thing I don't like in Oblivion. Is the leveling system is pretty trash. But that's not the one thing I'd change. And what about Morrowind? You know, fun fact, I've never actually really played Morrowind. Uh, like, I have it, and I played it a little bit. But when I got it, I wasn't really in the mood to play an RPG like Morrowind. And I want to try and, and figure out how to kind of... Um, I want to try to figure out like how I can explain it. Because I... A long time ago, I'm even trying to remember where I picked it up. I think I picked it up at Next Wave, which is a local video game story that's really, really good, and why I picked up a bunch of games recently. Um, I picked it up on the Xbox. I, I think I have it on Steam now as well. But back then I picked it up on the Xbox, I remember popping it in and playing it. And it was like, you're on a ship. You're off the ship. Go talk to whoever, do whatever you want. And I was like, that's really cool, and I like the idea. But I wasn't really in, in the mood for that kind of game at the time. So I just didn't do it. Right? Um, 
which is something that I want to go back and play at some point. I want to go play Morrowind at some point. If you play Morrowind, I wouldn't mind if you had a mod that took out the cliff racers. See, I've heard of the cliff racers. I've heard they're not fun. Uh... I don't know. See, if I played it, I feel like I'd want the experience. If I might mod them out later if they're as annoying as I, I've heard them claim to be. But I feel like I'd probably leave them in at first just to have the experience. And then I'll eat them out of my game, right? I know this is kind of blasphemy given how much you live and breathe Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah, it's kind of that's kind of really true at the moment. I, I kind of do Hey, it's fun, but yeah, admittedly, maybe I play it a little bit too much uh, currently. But, you know, that's the thing. It's not going to affect the streams anymore. Queues are, like, really good now. I don't need to be in the queue for, like, three hours to play the game. So, I can actually stream now and still play Final Fantasy XIV and still have fun. So, you know, Final Fantasy XIV is no longer going to be an issue with streaming, at least. But have you ever tried uh, ESO? I assume that's Elder Scrolls Online, right? Uh, no, I have not, actually. Because I honestly thought it was going to be garbage uh, when it first came out. And I was like, I don't really want to try this. I, I think I was also very jaded with MMOs at the time as well. Because I stopped playing World of Warcraft. And... MMOs are just garbage. They weren't good, in my opinion, for a long time. I didn't like them. Right? I was like, wow, it's gone to shit. Like, even the only other MMO I played that I enjoyed died, which was um, Warhammer Age of Reckoning. I actually really enjoyed Warhammer Age of Reckoning, and then that died. So, yeah, you know. Uh, and when I saw Elder Scrolls Online, I was like, oh, this might be cool. And then I was thinking about it. I'm like, nah, it probably won't be. And so I just never tried it. I heard it wasn't that good when it came out, which further cemented my idea that it wasn't going to be good. But I've actually heard recently it's got, well, maybe not recently, but over the past, like, couple years, it's gotten better. So I might give, I don't, well, no, I don't think I'll ever try it, but I mean, you never know, right? I might give it a shot one day. I mean, I haven't tried it, but I think it wouldn't be that good. But yeah, that, that, that's pretty much my, oh, whoops. <laughs> that's pretty much my thoughts as well. Uh, but I, I don't think it'd be too bad. I, I think I'd try it if given the opportunity. I need the mini me hat. It's me, but smaller. Now we're among us. Speedwagon's hat. Best girl's hat. I feel like that might be a JoJo spoiler that I'm not aware of yet. As in, like, best girl, because I know Speedwagon is the guy, right? So they have Speedwagon hat. I love Speedwagon. So I, I might... Oh, damn it. See, I need to get this, but also Speedwagon hat. New World has been sucking most of my time. Oh, yeah, you've been enjoying New World? See, New World looks interesting, but I've also heard it's... Well, I heard when it came out. Well, uh, I don't know. See, I heard mixed things. I heard from some people that it wasn't that good, and then I heard from some people that it was really fun. So I'm, I'm not too sure what to believe. I think it may have been, it might have just been like launch issues that they probably sorted out. Admittedly, I don't know if I'd play New World, but that's only because I'm already kind of in deep with Final Fantasy XIV. So I don't know if I could do another MMO, but it looks interesting though, right? Like, that's kind of the thing. It actually looks interesting. So I might give it a shot at some point if, when I have time and uh, money to just kind of spend, right? I also feel like my playstyle doesn't match most people who play most. Yeah, what would you say is your playstyle? Yeah, I eventually couldn't handle two CCGs. I can't imagine how hard juggling two MMOs would be. That'd be really difficult, I bet. Like, and yeah, I, I don't really, I can't really juggle two CCGs either. Like, I play Rune Terra and Bass Ackwards. You and I still need to play Rune Terra sometime, friendo. You still, we still need to play sometime. 
but yeah, I couldn't really do that either because I, I went from Shadowverse to Magic the Gathering and then to Terra. You know? So... And honestly, when Runeterra came out, I didn't even consider uh, keeping Magic the Gathering going. I don't know why, because I did enjoy MTG. I'm actually kind of thinking of maybe playing it again. Because I, I did enjoy MTG Arena. It, it was fun. But I don't know, man. I'm just kind of in deep in, Rune, in Runeterra at the moment. And I, I'm... I'm devoted, I, I'm, well not devoted, but I'm like kind of dedicated to actually grinding uh, and upping my rank in Runeterra, because I know I can get high rank. Like I actually know I can, I know, I know I'm good at card games. So I know I can get a high rank, I just need to like put in the time to actually grind ranked in Runeterra. So right now I am silver 2. But I've been, like, gold four, and that wasn't really too hard to attain. So I'm hoping I can reach plat before the end of the season, at the very least. If nothing else, right? Because, like, in MTG... See, because this is the thing, right? In Shadowverse, I got, like... I think... In the Shadowverse, in not in rotation, I don't in, in like you know just kind of when we can use like any card. I got like double A, the like double A rank, and in MTG I got I think it was the second highest rank on my first season of playing, which made me feel pretty good. I was like, okay, that's pretty solid. And then. I don't remember what happened. I think I stopped caring as much. So I didn't play ranked as hardcore to like get my rank back up that high when the season ended. So like on Rune Terror, I'm really hoping I can I can actually get to like plat before the end of the season. Uh, let's see. Bookworm says, I'm mostly the PvE type who's super excited about crafting. Dude, that's, that's basically me, to be honest. That, that's also me. Like, Final Fantasy XIV... Okay, so Bookworm, I'm not going to try to sell Final Fantasy XIV to you. But I will say, well I, well, I don't think they even have the game selling at the moment. Unless they change that. I, I don't know. But I'm not going to try to sell it for 14 to you. But... But I will say it does have a really good free trial, and uh, it's mostly a PVE-focused game, and has a really good crafting system. Well, not really a crafting system, but you have a lot of crafters, you have a lot of gatherers, you can play. Uh, it's really good, and the story is top-notch. Uh, highly recommended. If you ever decide to give Final Fantasy XIV a try, let me know. I'll help you through it. Uh, maybe I can, maybe we can play sometime. Uh, I think that'd be really fun. I'm not gonna try to push it on you, I promise. But I am just gonna let you know that it's really good. And I didn't think I'd say that about any MMO after WoW, like, went to shit. Can't get into Magic the Gathering? That's fair. It's not, it's not for everyone. Haven't really been grinding. I've gone to gold and the one above that with a really jank deck early on, but eh. I'm usually stuck in gold because I'm really stuck in the PvE now. Uh, the PvE in Rune Terror is really good, right? I really like Path of Champions. Path of Champions is really fun. And that's the only reason why I didn't grand rank the last season in Rune Terror, because I was I was too focused on PvE, because it's, it's just so enjoyable, you know? Um But I'm, I'm actually tearing myself away from PvE a little bit. I'm still doing like a run or two pretty much every day. But I'm trying to play against like actual people a little bit more. Good net deck, but not personally appealing. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. I will admit, I, I will happily meta slave in a game like Runeterra. I mean, I still have my fun decks that I just play for fun, 
but if I'm grinding, I will for sure meta slave it. Uh, sounds good. Same offer goes to the new world. Well, thank you. I might actually take you up on that offer. Because I'd, I'd be tempted to give it a shot. You know, it's, it seems up my alley because I think it's based more on... More on kind of historically... Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like it's more based on like historically... Like kind of more historical kind of weapons and atmosphere. As opposed to fantasy, right? Which I like fantasy, but I also like history. And I think having something different like that would actually be pretty fun. So yeah, I'll gladly give New World a shot sometime. It's just it's just a matter of when, I guess. Okay, we're gonna block the damage. I was gonna say I'm being really dumb. If you do, we should get a sponsored stream for some Bezos bucks. Perhaps. I heard the Secret World's world building could be pretty excellent, although I think they turned it into a single player game. Yeah, you're right. I forgot about Secret World, actually. That was a game that I had. That's a game I haven't heard from in a while, actually. Hold on. Let me look it up. Because I remember a long... Oh, not the Secret World of Arietti. That's a good movie, but I mean, like, the video game. Yeah, Secret World. Man, that game actually has a pretty high score. I remember when it came out. Like, me, my girlfriend at the time, and one of our other mutual friends that we played TF2 with. Because this is when I was really stuck in on TF2. Yeah, this is when I was playing, like, competitive TF2 and stuff. Um, the three of us were going to play Secret World. But I think, at the time, my computer was pretty shit, so I couldn't really run it. So I never actually played it. It's probably... I don't know. I don't really remember that much about it, man. That took me way back, though. To see the secret world, like, it's like, man, I remember when that game existed. But I don't remember anything about it. I don't even remember what it was like. You wonder if we can get him a soda pop? Maybe. Maybe. I think they turned it into a simpler game. You know... Just kind of talking about that. That's something I will say that I kind of like about Final Fantasy XIV. Is it's like it's a single player game, but in an MMO. That's probably the best way to describe Final Fantasy XIV as well. Is it's like a single player game inside an, an MMO. Because you have a good story. The quests you just do by yourself. And, like, you play with other people for dungeons, but that's really the only time you ever really need to interact with other people. If, if you know, you don't want to in any other scenario, right? And even now, since Shadowbringers, you can even do dungeons with NPCs. It's not as fast or as fun, but if you wanted to play Final Fantasy XIV by yourself, you can even do dungeon runs with NPCs. You know? Which I think is very different. Heard that Death Stranding tries to be like that too. Haven't played it though. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. I need to play Death Stranding sometime. Well, I, well Megan owns it, I think. So I, I should steal her PS5 one of these days and be like, Yo, I'm a stream Death Stranding. So your bookworm says, I would classify New World as fantasy, but it draws from different cultures for areas, characters, etc. Quests can be repetitive, but I like exploring the areas and seeing how they differ from others. That does sound fun. That does sound really fun. Honestly, it does seem like... Uh... Was it called New World? Yeah, New World. For some reason, I got Secret World in my head now, and I was like, oh, which one's which? 
It does seem interesting. Yeah. Like, honestly, Bookworm, having you play it kind of makes me want to give it a chance, right? Because, like, but well, that's the same with a lot of games for me. If I have someone I can play with, then I'm, I'm much more inclined to actually play it, you know? I mean, the only reason I even really started playing Final Fantasy XIV was because one of my friends, Tots, was like, "Oh, you should you know, Shadowbringers is about coming out in a little bit. You should you should play it." And then I did. And I was like, "Oh, it's really fun." So, uh, what are some classes you can play in New World? Like, what are some classes that they offer? Because I'm, I'm kind of curious about that. Okay, I've read that already. And like, if I wanted to switch class, do I need to be a different character? Or is it kind of like Final Fantasy XIV where I could just kind of swap classes at a whim if I so chose? Dad, popping corn. Uh, let's see. I feel like you'd be able to talk about problems you have more because there's a lot of lingo that would. Eh. Hmm. Be able to talk about problems you have more. There's a lot of lingo that would. Like with Death Stranding. I'm sorry, it's, I will admit, sometimes, sometimes I, I lose a certain, uh, conversation tracks while trying to focus on something like Turnip Boy. Oh, you mean with MMOs? Oh, okay. Okay, okay, yeah. That, that's fair. Not every game is for everyone, and that's okay. I agree 100%. Not every game is for everyone. When did WoW get bad for you? WoW got bad for me... Well, got bad for me. Funnily enough, right when Pandaria kind of came out, it was around the Pandaria time that I started to lose interest. And I don't necessarily remember why. I think it just felt not as great anymore. There's just something about it. it like, it felt like it kind of lost its magic. I still played it occasionally. Like, I, I would still hop on every now and then and play it. But yeah, it was right around when Mr. Pandaria came out that I kind of just went, yeah, no, I'm not too sure if I'm feeling it anymore, you know? And funnily enough, it wasn't because they had the panda characters either. I, I was like, well, it's whatever. I don't really care, you know? Hell, I played a Pandaren for a little bit. It was boring, but I played a Pandaren for a little bit. And if you're curious why I thought playing a Pandaren was boring, it was purely because... The starting area is, uh, man, the starting area, I don't like the starting area in Pandaria, like, at all, you know? It's just like, oh, I'm Pandaren, okay, that's yeah, cool. Let me go through this whole area before you can even explore the rest of the game's worlds. From what I remember, that's how it was. So it's like you're just stuck in, like, the Pandaren zone until you complete the your, your quests, right? Like, I don't know, it was very boring to me. I didn't like that. I've been keeping up on whatever's been going on since. Uh, vaguely. Like, I know the new expansion doesn't look good. Like, they're... So, when the new trailer... When the trailer for the the new expansion dropped... Well, you know, trailer. It was kind of like the devs just talking about it. 
right? When that dropped, I thought it was really bad, right? Because you can tell that they're scared of Final Fantasy XIV. You can absolutely tell that the WoW devs are scared of Final Fantasy XIV. Because they're trying really hard to copy Final Fantasy XIV's Thunder. And I say that because the thing with Endwalker, the most recent uh, Final Fantasy XIV expansion, is the devs have come out and they've said... Now, once again, I haven't beaten it, so I don't quite know how it ends yet. I'm close, but I'm not, I'm not quite there yet. Is the devs for Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker have said that this is the final expansion in this arc for the game's story. So it's kind of like they're going to be doing something different after Endwalker. They're, they're kind of finishing the story that Final Fantasy XIV has had at this point, and it seems like when the new expansion drops after Endwalker, we're going to be moving on to a different kind of story, which I think is good. I think that's really smart. And with the new trailer for the World of Warcraft expansion, what do they say? Oh, this is going to be the end for the current arc of World of Warcraft. You're literally, they're literally just saying that because they want to try to copy Final Fantasy XIV. They're literally just trying to copy Final Fantasy XIV, but they're not doing a good job of it, right? Especially if all they can really offer me in a new expansion is like a pretty area and the fact that I can walk on water, right? It's, it's really not that great. And I honestly think it's going to be the end of WoW soon. Like, I don't think WoW will die. I don't think Blizzard would ever let World of Warcraft die. But... it's it, Final Fantasy XIV is definitely going to have it beat. Like, guaranteed. World of Warcraft is going to be... Uh, kind of the second MMO people are going to be thinking about. If, not, if they're not already, it's going to happen somewhat soon. Probably within the next year. Uh, Bookworm says you can always use spec if you want for free up until a certain level as you play with different weapons. Okay. I personally play as a healer, or I play as DPS. There are also three factions to choose from that guide story quests and PvP missions. That's interesting. Okay. That's kind of cool. Let's see, Bass Hackward says I think I remember reading about the orc or tower and start in the very start of Vanilla's Agony. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the starting zones in World of Warcraft aren't fun. Which is why it sucks when you want to make a new class and you gotta do that, right? You gotta play it again. It becomes so boring and repetitive. And it's it's just not fun. They split the fan base with Classic, didn't they? They did. They did split the fan base with Classic. And the funny thing is, from what I understand, with a lot of the people, or at least a lot of people that I knew uh, that went and played Classic, is it's very much, uh, man... I thought this was going to be better because, you know what, with World of Warcraft Classic, people had rose-tinted glasses. They thought it was going to be the greatest thing ever. To be fair, I was the same way for the longest time. I thought oh, Classic WoW was better. Classic WoW was so much better. But if you go and play Classic WoW now with all of the old features that were removed, it's like it's probably removed for a good reason. Because I saw a lot of people going like, man, this sucks. It's like, of course, it's Classic WoW, you know? And you probably have a lot of people that didn't even play Classic WoW that went and played it. And they were like, they, they'd probably be like, oh man, this is what WoW used to be. Oh, I've heard so many good things about this. And then they play it and they find out they miss all the stuff that's in New WoW, right? That's very indicative of the kind of return to nostalgia. I feel that's a very temporary fix. Yeah, agreed. So you would say you think they'd know what they want, but don't? Yeah, kind of, right? Like, I don't know. I, a lot of a lot of World of Warcraft fans are very... How do I want to put it? Uh, not... Not... <laughs> Say I don't want to insult like the whole fan the whole fan community for like World of Warcraft, right? But it's like a lot of World of Warcraft fans don't really This 
This is going to sound mean, but they, they don't really like think too much, right? So they're, they, they, because everybody regards classic WoW as one of the greatest things ever that got ruined with updates, right? That's kind of how it was always viewed as. It was like, okay, well, classic WoW, Burning Crusade, it's the best, you know? I want to go back to that because it's, it's the peak of World of Warcraft. But you go back to it and you find out it's not really that great. It's okay, but, you know, it's not, it's really not that great. And, and you know, I'll give an example of this, right? One example that I can think of right off the bat is being an archer. As, as in, like, um, uh, like a hunter, right? Like being a hunter. So it's like, oh, I'm a hunter. I got my bow and my arrows and, oh, look, I got to I gotta buy arrows, okay? And I got to have inventory space for my arrows. Hmm. All right. It's kind of annoying, but I guess it'll be fine. Oh, I forgot to restock on arrows and I can't attack anymore. Huh. Okay, that's a, that's a bit weird. Because I remember when they got rid of arrows in World of Warcraft. Some people were going like, man, this sucks. It's They're casualizing my World of Warcraft. It's like, no, it's just better. You know, you shouldn't have to buy ammo for your class. That's a bit silly, you know. But it's just how it was. And I'm sure a lot of people that played Classic, that went and played Classic, they're probably like, man, I need to buy arrows now? Man, this sucks. You know? Because it does suck. It's not great. You know? I remember the booing there, or but the booing at Diablo Infinite was just fine. Twas, twas. Yeah, no, WoW is one of those games where, at the time, yeah, sure, it was really good. But, I mean, if you go back now, in, even into Classic WoW, it's, it's not, you know, it's really not that good. It was the best at the time, and when it was the best at the time, it was good, yeah. But now that we've gotten all of these other MMOs, like now that we have, you know, like Final Fantasy XIV and New World and, you know, you're just getting better stuff, to be fair. Like, I don't know much about New World. Like, so I can't really comment on that. Bookworm can comment on that more than I can. But from someone that's played uh, Warhammer Age Reckoning... Uh, World of Warcraft, and... Like, I played... I'm trying to think what other ones i played. I know I've played, like, at least a few. And then, you know, you have... You know, Final Fantasy XIV. It's like... In my opinion. But I'm also a big fan of Warhammer, to be fair. So I may be a little bit biased with Age of Reckoning. But it's like... They just... It, like, at least with Final Fantasy XIV, it, ju it's, it, it just does everything so much better than WoW did. You know, it has a story that I care about. You know, like, I I'm, I don't... Because, like, in World of Warcraft, I never really cared about the story. I was one of those players that would, like, skip through quests. Because I don't want to read a, a, an entire paragraph of a description. Just to know I need to kill, like, boars and collect hides. You know? I, 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 was, I don't need that. You know, I'm just going to play the game and I'm going to level and I'm going to do content and then I'm going to I'm going to finish it, presumably. Right. With Final Fantasy 14, it has a story that I care about. It has voiced cutscenes that I can be engaged with and characters that I can go, man, you know, these characters are pretty good. You know, I like them, you know. I read through the dialogue, not because it's in a quest box, but because it's like, oh, I'm talking to the characters, there's a little sequence here, and it's in text, I'll give it a read, you know? It's good. It's like, oh, you know, I want to be a different class, oh, well, now I need to make a whole new character, come up with a name, go through the starting zones, and go through these quests again. Uh, it's like, I want to be a new class, well, I go to the a guy that gives out the class, I go through like a little cutscene, I do the quest, he's like, here's your soul thing to become that class, and I can just switch to the class whenever I want now. I mean, I'm still a level 1 when I get it, even if I'm a level 90 on something else, 
But, you know, now it's like I have that class, I can just freely switch. I'm the same character. You know, like, it's really good. And even having, like, outfits that you can make, too. Like, that's that's also really fun in 14. That was something I never really cared much for in World of Warcraft. But in 14, it looks really nice. And you can make each class look the way you want them to kind of look. And I think that's really great. You know? Like, I think that's really, really good. And just... You know, like, 14 makes me care a lot when WoW never did. And honestly, I think that's kind of the biggest distinction between the two. Because, let's be real, if if I were still playing World of Warcraft and an expansion dropped, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have taken this much time off from streaming to play it, right? Like, I think that itself is kind of a thing. Like, if it were a WoW expansion, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I'll play it, but, you know, I'll, I'll still stream. Now, like I said, I wasn't, I didn't intend to take as much time off from streaming as I did. The hiatus wasn't intended. It was just the queues were packed. They were absolutely flooded. I needed to wait to play the game, right? And then I'd have to, even when I wasn't playing the game, I'd have to move my character so I didn't get logged out. That was like the only thing that was kind of a bummer with that and the only reason why the hiatus happened. But if it were World of Warcraft, you know, whatever. I'll hop on when I hop on, you know. I don't really care that much. Let's see, Bass Africa says, yeah, the text slash story having a lot of care really shows. It's the thing most people would ignore. Yeah, it is, right? It, it absolutely is. And one thing, one thing uh, you will always hear people in the Final Fantasy XIV community say, at, at least in, in my FC, in my, in my guild, right? It's don't skip the story. Like if you go, like if you join the guild that I'm in and you say, hey, I'm new. First thing pretty much any of them will say is don't skip the story. Because they care that much about it, right? They want you to enjoy the story. And it's such a friendly community too. You know, I, I know I'm letting Turnip Boy sleep here. He deserves it. But you know, I, I need to I need to go on about this a little bit more. Hey Ryan, welcome back to the stream. How you doing today, friendo? So new world, hey, stirs pot. Man, you know, legit, Rai, I, I'm actually, I'd actually be tempted to give New World a try. I will say that. It looks intriguing enough. And Bookworm, Bookworm's made me interested. Um, but I will say another thing uh, that I really like with Final Fantasy XIV is the community. Right? I love the Final Fantasy XIV community. They're so friendly. Right, it's such a friendly community. So, to give an example, in World of Warcraft, okay, so I have a friend, right, that started playing Final Fantasy XIV somewhat recently. I don't think he's kept up with it too much, but he's played it a little bit. He played tank, his first class, right? He decided to go with a tank. He gets to his dungeon, and from what he tells me, he's like, "Hey, I'm I'm new to the game, so I'm sorry if I mess up." And you know. He died on a bit, and the team and the party wiped. And you know what he told me that his, his party, like the people in his party, said he was like, "Um, oh, yeah, I'm very sorry that happened. I'm I'm new to tanking." They were like, "It's all right. Don't worry about it." You wouldn't get that in World of Warcraft, dude. Like I've literally played World of Warcraft where, uh, if they thought the healer was doing just vaguely subpar. It'd be like a vote kick would be initiated, right? If you wipe in a dungeon and you just say, I'm sorry, I'm new, they will tell you to get lost and to uninstall the game, right? They will probably vote kick you out of the party. You know, that's how bad the World of Warcraft community is. And uh, honestly, partially, probably why I stopped playing. Because it's a, it's such a bad community. But with Final Fantasy fourteen, it's like, no, you know, you're fine. You make mistakes. Mistakes happen. People wipe. You know, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Right? 
to me, that's that's really amazing. You know, like yeah, you get some people that are toxic, like some people, but the vast majority of people I've run into, they're very nice and very chill. You know, and that's probably what I like the most. Let's see, Rice says this is the first game Bookworm has out leveled me. Oh, really? She's that in a new world, dude. I can appreciate that. Yeah, video games are fun, right? See, this is one thing that we can all agree on for sure. Whether it's New World or Final Fantasy, with World of Warcraft, it can get shoved to the side because that one's not a part of this. Is that video games are fun, right? But I will also push Final Fantasy at least a little bit because I really, really enjoy Final Fantasy XIV. Okay, so like, this is something else I've kind of mentioned to some people, is that Final Fantasy XIV has actually convinced me to buy Final Fantasy XVI when it comes out. Because I love Final Fantasy, I, I do enjoy playing Final Fantasy. Like in general, not even just fourteen, but like in general, right? And, but I, I did kind of fall off of it. I fell off of it around uh, when 13 came out. Because I didn't, I never really played 13, but just from what I heard about it, it didn't seem up my alley at all, right? It didn't feel good. It, 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 it just didn't seem good, right? And you know, I've heard many things about 15 and all of that as well. But, you know, I've been I've enjoyed Final Fantasy XIV's story once again, like going back to that. I've enjoyed the story. And so I'm like, even if there's just a tiny bit of that in 16, I will be really happy. So I'm I'm gonna get Final Fantasy 16 whenever it comes out. I don't remember when it does, but the intention is to get 16. You know. Okay, there you go, we're kicking the shit out of Conductor Onion. He is indeed being quite the tough boy, I will say. What other FFs did we play? Uh, on stream, I don't think I've actually played any, but uh, funnily enough, that's one thing I want to do in the new year. I've actually told myself I want to play through, whether it's streamed or recorded, probably recorded just because RPGs. Um, is I want to play through uh, a lot of the Final Fantasy games that I haven't played and both have played, right? Uh, but I've played... Well, actually, yeah, every single one. That That is kind of the plan. I don't know if I'll do all of them next year, but I want to do at least half if I can, right? <laughs> Including Strangers of Paradise Final Fantasy. Yeah, because, cause, like, I've played 7. I've played some of 8, but I didn't play much of 8. Uh, I played some Crystal Chronicles, but I never finished Crystal Chronicles. I played 10. I love the shit out of 10. It's probably my favorite Final Fantasies, to be honest. Uh, I don't think I've played 9. Uh, I would have played... I played 11. I did play some 11. Uh, but I haven't really played that much. Right? I haven't really played that much Final Fantasy. And... Funnily enough, it, it's... Going back to Final Fantasy 14, it's made me want to play... 
all the other Final Fantasies. Because one thing Final Fantasy fourteen is also good at is it's really good at referencing old Final Fantasies. So I want to be able to go like, oh, I know that reference. I know that reference. I get that. You know? So I want to go back and play Final Fantasies that I haven't played and that I have played. And, you know, see what sort of references I can spot or... Um... I completely lost my train of thought because I was too busy killing bunnies. Uh, yeah, just I, I just want to enjoy older Final Fantasies that I either haven't gotten the chance to play or just for some reason or another just never got around to, right? Or replay some of the ones that I, I haven't played in a long ass time. Play some of my classics that I enjoy. Like 10 and like uh, old school 7. Uh, sounds like a good plan for the new year. I'm glad you think so. It, it's something I've been wanting to do for a bit, but I, I really want to do it next year if I can, for sure. I said, at least do some. 